insider risk in a work from anywhere world. I'm Tanya Hall and joining me is JD Hansen, author, chief information security officer and chief information officer at Code42. Welcome JD. Thanks for having me. What does Code42 do? Code 42. So we are a security software company. Um, and what we do is we build a software solution that helps security um, organizations similar to mine um, identify insider threats within their organization. And so our software um, at a technical level sits on endpoints, whether they're Windows, Macs, Linux, and it's monitoring all data activity and file movements to make sure that our security teams can identify when important data movement happens, occurs where da that data is leaving the organization. So security teams can dig in and identify and follow up and um, mitigate any risk to that company's important information. When you talk about insider risk, what specifically are you referring to? Yeah, insider risk. So um, we're specifically talking about the employees that are part of an organization. Um, we, we very much like to call it insider risk and not threat because we know that employees um, make mistakes and not everything is a malicious threat to the organization. Um, and so we have malicious actions that internal employees make and we have non-malicious actions that employees make. But when we say insider risk, we're talking about the actions that employees take that put our company at risk. What is it about the new reality of remote workforces that makes insider risk a bigger threat? Yeah, that's a great question. So when we when we transitioned to everybody remote, things changed. Um, you know, the, the concept of us seeing people in the office every day and us being able to see different things related to network traffic, all of that changed when we moved to remote. Um, they, there's also the aspects of people don't don't really feel like they're being watched. Um, they're a little bit more careless when they're at home. Um, a bit of their guard is down, and frankly, they're a little bit more stressed this year. And so, all of those factors play into the employees' actions, um, which put the company at a higher degree of risk to data loss. Why do insider threats pose such a challenge uh, to detect and catch? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, the reality is it, it, insider risks can look very appropriate um, because there are people that are approved to have access to certain data. Um, and some of the actions that insiders take from a security analyst perspective can look very normal. And so it's really important for security teams to identify where do they have their, their company's most important data and when are the, where are the people in the company putting that data at risk. And so this might be, you know, different public sharing links for some of their cloud platforms. It might be data moved to a physical media. It might be data emailed to a personal account um, or data just saved in a place that the company has zero visibility to. There's all sorts of actions that insider takes, that an insider takes that puts the company at risk. Um, and some of those can look like very normal activities. So it's a, it's a really tricky problem for security teams to, to cover. What are some of the organizational cultural changes that need to occur for this vulnerability to diminish? Oh gosh, that's a, that's a really great question too. Um, you know, some of the things that, that we do internally within my team is it, it really is a culture, cultural thing. We have to make sure that um, the insider the insider risk program is very transparent. Um, we have to make sure that um, we're, we're deterring the, the actions that employees take that might put data at risk. Um, so it, it never even happens in the first place. Um, we, ca we can't operate, security teams can't, can't keep operating the, like the big brother, like the, the gotcha team trying to identify this and call someone out. Um, we, we really have to create a culture of like partnering together. Um, when we see somebody putting data at risk, we have to educate. 
We can't, you know, we can't slap anyone's wrist or whatnot. We actually have to educate to curb this problem holistically within a company. What other steps do you recommend organizations take to address insider risk? Yeah, I, I mean, the, the, the first thing is just like really digging in to understand like how you want to, how you want to address the problem from a people process standpoint. And so, you know, lots of times like we can buy technology, we can roll it out across an organization and we don't have to involve, you know, the, the chief people officer, the human resource officer, or we don't have to involve general counsel. For an insider risk program, we're talking about employees at a company. That, that's a very different um, problem that security teams are asked to, to, to do and to address. And th this requires partnering with different teams. And so, you know, the, the first and foremost thing is making sure that you're pulling in those right partners from HR and legal um, and creating that holistic program. Um, the second thing is, you know, you need tech that covers everything. I think we in the security industry, we've tried to tackle this problem with a bit more of the, I'm going to watch this one X filtration vector, or I'm going to watch this one user. And that, that didn't really work. Work. Um, and so you need technology that can sit on an endpoint and really monitor all of the employees data movement kind of throughout that employees life cycle when they first started a company to when they leave at a company. JD Hansen, Chief Information Security Officer and Chief Information Officer at Code 42. Oh, and author of Inside Jobs, Why Insider Risk is the Biggest Cyber Threat You Can't Ignore. If somebody wants to connect with you, JD, maybe they want to get a copy of your upcoming book. How can they do that? Um, just hit me up on LinkedIn. I'd be happy to connect with you. And um, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. And find more of my interviews right here or at tanyahall.net. Thanks for watching.